wind in the willows. The river bank. Mole had been working very hard all morning, spring cleaning his little home. First with brooms, then with dusters, and then on ladders with a pail of whitewash, until he had dust in his throat and splashes of whitewash all over his black fur. Suddenly he flung down his brush on the floor and said, Bother and blow! Hang spring cleaning! and bolted out of the house. He scraped and scratched and scrabbled and scrooged, working busily with his little paws and muttering, Up we go! Up we go! until at last, pop! His snout came out into the sunlight, and he found himself rolling in a great meadow. He wandered along aimlessly until he stood by the edge of a flowing river. Never in his life had he seen a river before. All was glints and gleams, chatter and bubble. Mole was bewitched. As he sat on the grass and looked across the river, a dark hole in the bank opposite, just above the water's edge, caught his eye. As he gazed, something bright and small seemed to twinkle in the heart of it, vanished, then twinkled once more. Then, as he looked, it winked at him, and a small brown face with whiskers appeared. It was the Water Rat. Hello, Mole, said Water Rat. Hello, Rat, said Mole. Rat said nothing more, but unfastened a rope and hauled on it. Then he stepped into a little boat. It was painted blue and white, and was just the size for two animals. Rat rode smartly across the river. Lean on me, he said, reaching the other side. Now then, step lively. And Mole, to his surprise and rapture, found himself seated in the stern of a real boat. This is a wonderful day, he said, as Rat shoved off and took to the oars again. Do you know, I've never been in a boat before in all my life. What? cried Rat, open mouthed. Never been a... you never... Well, I... What have you been doing, then? Is it so nice as all that? asked Mole shyly. Nice? It's the only thing, said Rat. Believe me, there's nothing, absolutely nothing, half so much worth doing as simply messing about in boats. Look out, Rat! But it was too late. The boat struck the bank at full tilt. Rat and Mole fell on their backs into the bottom of the boat, their feet in the air. Look here, said Rat, picking himself up with a laugh. If you've really nothing better to do today, suppose we drop down the river together and make a long day of it. Mole waggled his toes from sheer happiness. What a day I'm having, he said. Let's start at once. Wait a minute, said Rat, and he climbed up into his hole and reappeared, staggering under a fat wicker basket. What's inside it? asked Mole. Mm, there's cold chicken, uh, cold tongue hole, um, cold ham, cold beef, pickled gherkins, salad, French, gr mm, French rolls, cress, sandwich, spotted mm, meat, ginger beer, lemonade, soda water, Oh, stop, stop, this is too much. Do you really think so? The other animals are always telling me that I'm a mean beast. Mole trailed a paw in the water lazily as Rat rode steadily on. What lies over there? asked Mole, waving a paw towards one side of the river. That? No, oh, that's just the wild wood, said Rat shortly. We don't go there very much, we river bankers. Aren't they, aren't they very nice people in there? Well, replied Rat, let me see. The squirrels are all right, and the rabbits, some of them. And then there's dear old Badger, of course. He wouldn't live anywhere else. Nobody interferes with him. Why, who should interfere with him? asked Mo. 
Well, there are others, explained Rat. Weasels, <laughs> stoats, foxes and so on. Well, they're all right in a way, but you can't really trust them, and that's a fact. Now then, here's where we're going to lunch. Rat brought the boat alongside the bank, helped Mould safely ashore, and swung out the luncheon basket. Having eaten and drunk their fill, they lay on the bank, and dozed. After a while, they heard a rustle behind them. Turning, they saw a stripy head with high shoulders behind it, peering at them from behind a hedge. Come on, Badger! shouted Rat. Badger trotted forward a pace or two, then grunted, Hmm, company, he muttered, and turned his back, and disappeared. That's just like him, said Rat. Simply hates people. We shan't see any more of him today. Well, well, said Rat presently. I suppose we ought to be moving. The afternoon sun was getting low as Rat rode homeward in a dreamy mood, murmuring poetry to himself and not paying much attention to Mole. Ratty, said Mole suddenly, I want to row now. Rat shook his head with a smile. Not yet, my young friend. Wait till you've had a few lessons. It's not so easy as it looks. But Mole began to feel more and more jealous of Rat, rowing so strongly and easily along. He jumped up and seized the oar so quickly that Rat was taken by surprise and fell off his seat. Stop it, you silly ass, cried Rat from the bottom of the boat. You can't do it. You'll turn us over. Mole flung his oars back with a flourish and made a great dig in the water. But he missed the water altogether. His legs flew up above his head and he found himself lying on top of Rat. Greatly alarmed, Mole grabbed at the side of the boat, then splosh! Over went the boat and Mole found himself struggling in the river. Ooh, how cold the water was! How very wet it felt! Down, down, down plunged the terrified Mole. Then, spluttering and coughing, he rose to the surface before he felt himself sinking again. Then, suddenly, a firm paw gripped him by the back of his neck. It was Rat, and he was laughing. He shoved an oar under Mole's arm, then he did the same by the other side of him, and, swimming behind, propelled the helpless animal to the shore, hauled him out, and set him down on the bank, a squashy, pulpy lump of misery. When Rat had rubbed him down a bit and wrung some of the water out of him, he said, Now then, old fellow, trot up and down the towing path as hard as you can, till you're warm and dry, while I die for the basket. When all was ready for a start once more, Mole, limp and dejected, took his seat in the stern of the boat. I think, said Rat, that you'd better come and stay with me. I'll teach you to row and to swim, and you'll soon be as handy on the water as any of us. When they got home, Rat made a bright fire in the parlour, and set Mole in an armchair in front of it, having fetched him a dressing gown and slippers. Shortly after supper, a very sleepy Mole was taken upstairs to Ratty's best bedroom, where as soon as he laid his head on the pillow, he fell fast asleep in great peace and contentment.